introduce you guys, but just by way of introduction, um, my name is Dan Jones and Paul Clough. You want to wave, Paul, so people can. and Yardley, and we do a lot of work with real estate agents, especially Keller Williams agents, and um, have been for a long, long time. Um, and so thank you for letting us take some of your time today. Just wanted to hopefully, uh, we've been on a mission this past week trying to impart knowledge and help people get connected with um, the benefits that are being provided by the the CARES Act and some and some of the other acts that have uh, preceded it in the last few weeks, and it's um, putting it mildly, it is confusing. And um, I know a lot of you guys are confused, and a lot of the banks are confused, trying to figure, sort of trying to figure this out and what to do and how to do it. Um, but we will kind of give you a state of the nation today, where we are, and um, how this is you know, kind of how it's working. And we've trying, been in contact with a lot of banks and trying to um, just see what different people are doing and where they are and how it goes. So to start out with, probably the, the biggest program that people have the most questions about is the Payroll Protection Program um, that was part of the CARES Act and is um, turned on, at, theoretically by the SBA on Friday, April 3rd, they were um, supposed to take, start to take loans. Um, we only know of a couple of banks that have been uh, able to start, start to do that. And a lot, a lot of the others are trying to sort of figuring it out and uh, over the weekend and today. Um, but the basics of the program, there, there's two, two basic questions to see if you qualify. One is were you in business on February 15th? um 2020 and if the answer to that is yes the second question is do you have payroll costs in 2019 um and payroll costs there's a broad definition of that that for this purpose also includes self-employment income um so we'll talk about that kind of in, in two pieces one those that um have like a qualified association that's an s corporation take a salary through payroll and that sort of thing. It's, um, it's very clear and fairly straightforward um, for you and how it works and what you need. And then those that are self-employed in the traditional sense, um, although, and, um, and do not have, do not take a quote payroll through a payroll service or um, and file quarterly payroll returns and that sort of thing. For those that, if you do have a qualified association, for example, and you do do, do payroll on a regular basis, um, the, the act basically allows you to take um, one month worth of payroll, an average one month payroll based on your 219 payroll, plus average monthly health costs, plus mo average monthly retirement benefits, and multiply that by two and a half two and a half times and that is the amount of loan that you can get so if your average monthly payroll was ten thousand dollars you can get a twenty five thousand dollar loan um, the loan starts so once you apply for a loan through a local bank um, you can't do it directly with the sba as far as we know unless paul knows something differently today banks they're overwhelmed um i was told by bank of america this morning they've already had 99,000 applications um banks are overwhelmed and so they're not taking loan application from people that typically were not a, a customer of the bank on february 15th 2020 so um you if you're going to apply the odds are you'll have to do that through um your your bank you use for your business now you won't be able to do that through a broker you know sba broker or something like that um so if you are self-employed this is a little more confusing it's un more unclear how all the provisions apply to the self-employed but if you're self-employed you can get loan a loan for um 
your average monthly, again, your average monthly payroll, but what they're including payroll costs for the self-employed is your self-employment income up to $100,000. So if you're self-employed, your self-employment income is over $100,000, your cap, um, for self-employment income for 2019, that is. So if you take that, um, divide it by 12, 100,000 divided by 12, to give you an average monthly amount, multiply it by two and a half, you come up with a number something like 21,000. So if you're self-employed, the maximum loan you can get is $21,000. Um, same thing applies. You, there's an application process through, um, through the banks. What we had heard on Friday, and again, less, uh, Paul may have heard something um, newer, that, that self-employed can apply beginning uh, uh, April 10th. The SBA will be taking applications for self-employed self individuals um, on April, April 10th. What you can do now is if you have not talked to your bank already, get in, touch with your, get in touch with your bank, see if they are taking applications, see what their process is, um, and see, uh, uh, you know, see what you, documents you need to get together for them. Typically from what we've seen for the most part is um, you need the, the um, um, uh, W-3s and W-2s for 2019. You need payroll reports for 2019 and um, payroll tax returns, Form 940, 941s, and those kind of things. Um, if you're self-employed, they're looking for your self-employment income. Typically, that would be a Schedule C from your um, from your tax return. And again, unclear what other documentation they will be looking for um, on self-employed. I think the SBA, to a great extent, is trying to work that out themselves. Um, Paul, you want to talk about the, the loan forgiveness portion of it? Hello. Yeah, I'd like to hear a little bit about that, please. Did I lose? Is, did I lose Paul? Hello, he's there. I can't hear him. trying to connect well let me while he's trying to connect on that let me let me start on that so the loan it, what you also may have heard about the the loan is a portion of it um, a portion of the loan will be it potentially can be forgiven and how that works is once you get the loan you start an eight week period and over that eight weeks Basically, what you pay out in payroll, what you pay out in um, rent and utilities uh, for your business can be forgiven. Um, and so, again, it's an eight week period for real estate agents. Um, typically, that you do not have a separate lease with uh, for rent and rental expense. So, for your business, so it would be um, your payroll, your payroll costs that would be that would be forgiven over that, um, over that period of time. Um, so any, any portion of the loan that isn't forgiven, it converts, and this has changed from day to day, but um, the last thing I've heard is they're doing two-year loans with a 1% interest rate. Payments on the loans are deferred for six months. So um, there are no payment requirements for six months um, during the, the deferral period. Then it, it's a two-year loan at one at a one percent one percent interest rate. Um, Dan, I'm I'm back. I think I think I'm reconnected. Can you oh, hear good. Me? I can hear you. All right. Hopefully, everyone else can. Uh, just a couple of things I tried to say a minute ago. In working with clients over the last couple of days, I would say the requirements of documentation by banks vary widely. Uh, they include the, the various payroll documents that, that Dan referred to, um, but some of them are also looking for tax returns, um, 
certificates of organization, operating agreements, and it's not always clear uh, um, when you when you get to the the bank and the website um, what you need until you start the process. And so, um, so, so I think it, it may take a little more effort than you than you think to to complete the application process. I also said had seen some of the websites are broken. Um, you know, they put to, they're put together pretty quickly and they're they're trying to get them working. Um, so it may take a bit of effort um, and the websites may just be overwhelmed with people trying to apply. Um, a, a couple of questions here. One about Wells Fargo and um, there was a press release they issued this morning saying that they had received applications for over 10 billion uh, of loans and that was they'd reached their limit. And they, they basically blamed the regulators um, for that limit, indicated that they had plenty of money to lend. It appeared to me that they're um, looking to leverage this, you know, to, to achieve some other goals. And if anyone's a Wells Fargo customer that hasn't applied, I think you're just going to have to be patient um, and, and see where that, um, you know, how, how that, that sorts itself out. I'm sure it will, but it's going to take time. Um, the other thing that I saw on Friday was a reference to the $349 billion limit on this. And then this Treasury Secretary said, if we use that money up, we'll just get Congress to approve more. So you may not get your money this week. You may not get it next week. But I, I do believe that people who are eligible for this program will end up being able to, to get the required loan from, from the program. Yeah, this is for once. Um... You know, I'm I'm always used to the government putting in up her roadblocks and hurdles to you know to participate in programs like this. They're really not. I mean, again, the the only requirements in the law are you were in business on February 15th and you had payroll last year, um, payroll costs last year, and so they're really trying to do get money in, in people's hands, but. As you can imagine, a, a $350 billion program and trying to get that in place and up and running within, within a week is a pretty daunting, um, a daunting task. Um, Paul, just so the, the, the banks we, we know about, I know Bank of America has an online application that uh, they turned on Friday morning at 8 o'clock. So if you're a Bank of America, that seems to be working. Um, the, the other one that I know of that's been up and work, working since Friday is bank is the Penn Community Bank, which is a local uh, Bucks County Bucks County bank. But they have been taking email applications um, since Friday. Some of the other Santander uh, hasn't quite figured this out. Uh, PNC 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 is up now, um, although working very slowly. BB and T. Uh, was working over the weekend, but there were problems with it. Um, yeah, I think it, if your bank's not mentioned here, you just need to keep checking with that bank and and see um, see when it becomes available. Yeah, just yeah. But by the way, to Dan's point about Penn Community Bank, they are requesting everything email emailed in one email. So they don't have an online application. It has to be emailed to your loan officer or or, or contact at the bank. Um, the bigger banks are, are doing this through um, a website update and a portal um, to upload the information. Yeah, I see somebody said WSFS, um, they were allowed to apply. They were allowed to apply this morning. So um, it's start. Is starting to work. Uh, TD Bank. I'm not sure their application is up and running. Uh, is up and running yet? But they're. I, I they're, believe. I believe so. No, oh, it is. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so, um, as you as you work work through it, the again, the the banks are trying to figure it out. You have to apply through your local local banks. Any other questions on the the Payroll Protection Program loan. Paul, you see anything? I saw one about 940 or 941 form. Um, you know, they, they basically contain very similar information, but the banks, like for example, Penn Community wanted both. 
um, you, your bank want, might want one or the other. You know, you're just going to have to check the bank and see what they're looking for in terms of documentation. Um, what do we show for payroll costs? I think payroll is your wages plus your health insurance. Um, and, and also, um, Pennsylvania unemployment is eligible to be added in to reach your, your total payroll cost. That's sort of the simplest way to think of it. Yeah, if you, again, if you don't have payroll, you're, it's your self-employment, it's your self-employment income. Um, and so I would look to your 2018 or 19 tax return for that, for your Schedule C uh, is typically the best place to, to get, that, get that information. Um, but um, it, it also, yeah, self-employment includes your health, health insurance and retirement benefits. So, for example, right. if you made a, um, a, a SAP contribution, uh, I believe that would be that would be qualify as part of your uh, your your retirement income or uh, retirement contribution. So that would be included in your average monthly average monthly payroll cost. So, um, Maybe we should should move on. Yeah, next, you want to talk topic. about unemployment? You want to talk about unemployment insurance? Sure. Um, in in Pennsylvania, self-employed people are not eligible to collect um, unemployment, and the CARES Act, uh, which is now a little over a week old, provided that. $600 per week of federal benefit is available to anyone who is unemployed. And that's in addition to whatever the state provides. So in the case of a Pennsylvania self-employed individual, you have nothing from the state plus $600 from the federal. Much like the, the payroll protection program, which is being managed by the SBA and the banks, the unemployment federal benefit is being managed by the states. And so that means the way to get the federal $600 benefit is to apply through the state. Uh, unfortunately, as of now, the state's not able to handle those applications. And, and um, I, I literally just checked on this a half hour ago. They still have something on their website that says, um, please do not um, submit an application right now. Um, check back and we'll provide guidance in the future. Um, and so I, I, I don't know how long this is going to take for them to figure it out. The banks have moved pretty quickly, whether the state's able to um, get this updated in, in the next couple of days or it takes a couple of weeks it is, you know, remains to be seen. Um, the other thing about unemployment is it's, it's been extended by 13 weeks so in the in the event that this drags on and on and on there's an extra 13 weeks of, of availability um, however i think probably the bigger concern for this is when pennsylvania will be ready um, to accept those applications and i don't know when that's going to be unfortunately um. Yeah. Yeah. There again, no no direction on where or when when to file. One of the questions we've gotten quite a bit last: Should I apply for unemployment or should I do the payroll protection payroll protection program? Um, unless your um, average annual payroll cost is pretty low, you're probably better off applying for the payroll protection loan first, and then after the eight-week period is expired, um, if you know the, you're, you're still uh, in a reduced income uh, uh, mode, then I would apply apply for the unemployment unemployment then. Um, as Paul said, if you're self-employed, you don't. You basically, Pennsylvania do, does not pay. Um, um, unemployment. So you what you would get is a six hundred dollar weekly benefit um, over the eight eight weeks that you would um, 
over the eight weeks that you would could get the PPP loan forgiveness for, that would be $4,800. So if you're, you know, if you can get a loan for greater than $4,800, then you're probably better off with a loan um, than you would be loan first before you would get get the unemployment. Um, the answers to some of these questions um, are difficult because we don't know, unlike the SBA program that Dan talked about where there have been at least some rules issued and regulations issued, how this is going to be administered, um, th there are a lot of details. So what, what's the minimum income? I mean, normally you have to represent that you're looking for employment and that you can't, haven't found it yet. And you have to do that on a weekly basis to keep getting the benefit. Um, you know, here, if you, if you, um, a house went under contract in March and it doesn't close until May and you're going to get the income in May, does that count? I mean, that, that's a great question that I'm sure nobody's thought, thought through the answer to. You're going to get income in May, but you're not earning income in May. You're earning it from work that was done before that. And so um, I believe the fact that you're not able to show houses and you're not able to do things should be sufficient and you're going to have to make those representations to the um you know the pennsylvania department of labor to be able to keep getting the, the benefits once they start and the, um, and the requirement the requirement for self-employed isn't that you have no income it's that you have reduced income your, your income right. your income was um, substantially impacted by um the covid by COVID-19 situation, which I'm sure is the case for everyone on this call. Um, so, um, I, I, you know, I, I think you should certainly think about applying um, either either now or in the weeks to weeks to come following your loan. But um, again, it, it would apply to practically everyone on this call. Couple of questions back on the loan forgiveness, um, Dan. Is it taxable? And the, the answer is no. It's not taxable, and it's neither is it automatic. Um, it, there will be um, a process defined, and it's not yet defined to document your payroll um, for the interim eight, the, the first eight weeks after the loan um, is issued, and then you'll get credit back for wages paid as well as rent, health benefits. Um, mortgage interest on your business property, not mortgage interest on your home property, but um, there will be a process that's not yet defined. They're still, bluntly, they're still working out how to get the money out. And I think it'll take some time for them to figure out the forgiveness side, but th that's not gonna happen until the end of June. Um, Dan, Yes, the question, if your W-2 income is an escrow case, can you apply for a self-employed unemployment uh, as, as well? Again, I, I think you would qualify um, for the federal $600, um, $600 a week um, uh, unemployment, no matter, no matter what, whether you're um, W-2, S-Corp, sole proprietor, um, you would qu qualify for that in any any event. Is it only the six hundred dollar max, or can we collect on our two thousand eighteen gross income as well? Um, for the unemployment piece, it's it, basically the federal uh, additional unemployment is six hundred dollars, six hundred dollars a week. Um, let's see. An LLC, but don't pay myself a regular salary. Uh, the The payroll protection program is based on the amount of wages paid during 2019, and, and it's not really a gray area. It's a pretty clear calculation. Whatever that amount of wages is divided by 12 gives you a monthly number. And then you multiply that by two and a half, and that's the amount of the loan that's available. And, and that's why Dan said it's sort of an individual decision depending on what your wages are um, compared to the unemployment benefit, which is going to be a 
a, um, a better program for you. And so you'll have to look at that situation yourself. Um, as we sit here today, you have, you have to wait for unemployment. Uh, and so if you're eligible for the payroll protection, I would think that would be a better way to go. Um, you could file for the payroll protection loan program and perhaps unemployment. However, if you're paying yourself wages, then during that period, then you're on payroll and you wouldn't be eligible for unemployment. So you could start one and then go back and pay yourself the wages, which you're going to need to be able to get the loan forgiveness. But then that would make you ineligible for unemployment, I believe. Yeah, so again, that's kind of a key to the forgiveness piece is you want to continue to pay yourself um, payroll a salary during this eight week forgiveness period because that's how the forgiveness part is going to be uh, going to be determined. Um, if you don't pay yourself salary, it won't be forgiven and basically you've got an inexpensive loan, which isn't a bad thing, but um, it, it's not a forgiven, not a forgiven loan. Um, the, the eight weeks of forgiveness, how does that pay, pay into the loan amount? Um, say you borrowed $20,000 on the loan and then your eight weeks of salary were $14,000, then you've got what automatically becomes a $6,000 loan for that 24 month period. Uh, there's no interest earned. I believe there's no interest earned for the remainder of 2020 and then at 1%. So as Dan said, you've got, a, you've kind of created a low interest loan for yourself. You can prepay it without any penalty. Um, so if business picks up and, and you want to get out of that, that's not a problem. But um, the loan forgiveness is completely based on payroll and or, and or rent and, and healthcare costs. It, uh, over the eight weeks following when you get the loan money. I, somebody asked a question uh, about how, how do I pay myself salary from a loan if I'm self-employed? Um, that is a great question. And that's one I do not believe the SBA has figured out. Um, because if, if you kind of, it, it, it's easy if you're on, you're on payroll and, and taking a salary because you can pay yourself a salary. Um, but you cannot generate self-employment income um, if you're not selling houses. Um, so in, if it's purely based on self, the forgiveness is purely based on self-employment income, uh, it's hard to kind of see how the loan would be forgiven. I know that's not the SBA's intent. The SBA's intent is um, to take care of self-employed uh, as well as employed um, people, but we don't know how that we don't know how that is going to going to work. And I'm, again, I'm not sure the SBA does. I believe that's a large part of why they have um, delayed until April 10th the implementation of the program for self em, self employed. The um, good question about the economic disaster um, loan. Um, this is another program but that is actually administered by the SBA directly and the application process is through the SBA. The um, economic injury disaster loan, um, the whole concept of it precedes the coronavirus. And what, what they've done is added to it up to a $10,000 forgiveness aspect um, where, where you can borrow the money and, and, and the typical economic injury disaster loan um, is a 30-year loan at 3.75% um, with no forgiveness capability. Um, what the um, economic injury grant does is make the first $10,000 of that forgivable. And so that piece can be used for the following, working capital, rent, inventory, payroll, and marketing. And so you presumably have to go back and document what you spent that the first ten thousand dollars on, and then um, then get the forgiveness on, on that piece of it. 
Um, supposedly, they're going to be quick to disperse that, but I have to imagine, just like the banks, the SBA process is probably pretty backed up um, because this, this is a brand new program. Um, and, and so, um, you know, this may be worthwhile to you, but you'd have to apply through the SBA website for this. I think the payroll protection is designed to be a little faster um, and, um, and, and more direct in terms of getting money in people's hands and, and can exceed the $10,000 amount um, of the um, economic injury grant. Dan, anything to add on that? No, I, I think you, I think you hit it. I, it's um, a, a more the the disaster loan. It's special funds set aside, but it's a more traditional SBA process, and it, you know, it requires um, the typical SBA process and documentation, which is much more extensive than what they're looking for for the payroll protection loans. Payroll protection loans, they're just trying to do it um, quickly and, um, and, and low, very low hurdle. There's no guarantees. Um, there's no requirement for collateral, any of those sorts of things on the payroll protection program. It's just, it's simply, were you in business? Did you have payroll? And I see somebody asked a question. There's still, if I'm unemployed, I don't have an escort, don't have payroll, can I, does any of this apply to me? And the answer is absolutely. It does, and we talk about payroll costs because the SBA defined payroll costs not only to be salary, but to be self-employment income. So if you don't have payroll, you don't, you're not an S corp, you don't get W-2, you're just simply self-employed. This absolutely applies to you. Um, it's not as clear how they're going to apply it to you, but it absolutely applies to you and you should be focused on it and uh, looking at Looking at uh, looking into the program, again, if you're self just straight out self-employed, not salaried wages, W-2, uh, purely 1099, the maximum loan you can get is about twenty-one thousand, twenty-one thousand dollars, and um, they will try to, you know, again, it's less clear on how they'll figure out what, how much of it is um, forgiven, but that is the in, that's the intent, and they're working on those regulations. It says, do we wait, if we're self-employed, do we wait till April 10th for new guidance? Um, supposedly April 10th is the date that if you're self-employed, you can apply for the payroll protection program. Uh, new guidance could come before that or it could come after that. I, I believe you need to look at this stuff every day um, just to, to see what you're eligible for and, and where it is and it's changing very rapidly um, and more information is becoming available. I would contact your bank um, for certain with, with regard to being the self-employed process and see when they think they'll be open for, for application for self-employed people. And, and, and same on the unemployment front. You, you need to watch that every day because once, once they open that up in Pennsylvania to um, self-employed people, I can imagine there will be quite the crush. And um, and if that's something that you can apply for, you want to do that right at the, you want to be right at the front of the line there. It says, why wouldn't we just apply for that? Um, for unemployment. It's cleaner and, and doesn't have to be repaid. Well, first of all, you can't apply for it yet. <laughs> They're telling you, you you can't. But, but second of all, um, the forgiveness aspect of the payroll protection um, program uh, makes that money, I, I think, more attractive. One, it's not taxable, and and second, um, it, you can you can get more than six hundred dollars a week um, from it, depending on what your your uh, payroll was for last year. So, for many people, that's a better alternative. What site do you need to check for unemployment? It's the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry. If you just do a search on Pennsylvania unemployment, um, you, you can eventually get to the right place. Let me let me talk about an, another topic for a minute or two, if we're good. And that's the recovery rebates. And I think most of you have probably heard about that as well. 
and that is where you will be getting money in the mail. $1,200 for an individual, $2,400 for a married couple, and additional $500 for children under, uh, under 15. This is a credit against your 2020 tax return on your 2020 tax return. So ultimately in 2021, when you file your 2020 tax return, um, there will be a credit for these amounts, 1,200 individual, 2,400 married filing jointly and $500 a child under 17. What the IRS is doing is they are advancing those credits to you. So you will be getting a, uh, an advance payment. It will be, if the IRS has your bank information, it will be a direct deposit in your bank account. If not, it will be a check in the mail. Uh, either way, there is nothing that you need to do um, to, to get, get it. It will, it, will, it will happen automatically and it will, um, it will come to you. Um, how they know how much to send you in the check, it's based on your last filed tax return, which would, for most people, would either be 2018 or your 2019 tax return. So based on those, um, which of those has been filed, it'll, it'll be based on that and um, uh, and the kids. If you had a, uh, I've had the question, what if I just had a child in 2020 or I had a child in 2019, but I haven't filed my 2019 tax return, will I get the $500? And the answer is yes, you will get the $500 credit against your 2020 tax return but it will not show up in the advance check that you will get, but you will ultimately get a credit, uh, an extra credit on that, on your 2020 tax return for that child. There are phase out provisions to this. So if your income of, for a single is over 75,000, 75, married filing jointly, if it's over 150, if you're a head of household, if you're over 112,500, the credit begins to phase out. It phases out, at five five percent. So for every every uh, every hundred dollars, five dollars of the credit phases out as your income goes over the 150 limit. If you're married filing jointly, it phases out at 190 something. You're you're completely out of it if you had no children. And again, if the, the additional credit for children that makes that phase out go uh, go higher and higher. Um, again, no, there's no action that you need to take to get this. It'll come to you uh, in the mail, a gift from your friends at the IRS. A couple of questions, some, some good clarification questions on this. Um, if you owe money every year, does it add to your tax, um, to your tax bill? The answer is no. Um, it's a credit against those taxes, but they're paying it to you now. So if, if, you, if, um, if you owe, you're going to owe the same amount you would have owed regardless, and you'll have gotten this, this money now, and, and you'll show it as both money received and then money um, or, or the credit on the return when you file the return next year. Um, do you have to pay taxes on this? No, it's the tax credit, um, and, it, and it would not be taxable income um, to you next year either. Um, I have a daughter who's 20, and I, I claimed her last year. Um, the question is whether she will claim herself this year. Um, if, if you're dependent on someone else's return, then you are not entitled to the credit. Um, so like this is a great example of a college student um, that might have a little bit of income, might not pay any tax. Um, that person would not get the, um, would not get the, the uh, refundable credit. If, if she was not a dependent on your return, for 2020, then she would be entitled to the $1,200 credit. But because she was on your return last year, she's not going to get the check now. Um, she still might be entitled to the credit, um, but but not not she won't get any money in April or May by the time they, they finally get this out. I see another question on the payroll protection. If you receive a paycheck from your business, but you pay your health insurance personally, not out of your business account, the, the language in the law says that it, um, it, 
the, the health care costs they're talking about are for group health care plans. So I believe if it's an individual policy that you get through the marketplace, it's not eligible for this. Um, however, and generally self-employed people can deduct their health insurance. Um, I, I don't know how that that's whether you know there'll be a clarification on that that the self-employed people would be able to to include that. But the language in the in the law was group group health plans. You want to talk about retirement accounts? Sure. Um, as as Dan said earlier, one of the things that the whole purpose of all this is to put money in the hands of consumers so that people can buy groceries and pay rent and pay mortgage payments. Um, and in addition to these uh, unemployment and the payroll protection plan, they're allowing people to top, tap into their retirement accounts, either IRAs or 401ks. Um, and in essence, borrow money from your own retirement account um, to the extent that, I mean, uh, 401ks you've been able to borrow from, not but not IRAs. So they will allow you to take up to $100,000 out of a retirement account. Um, and if you, uh, regardless of your age, there's no 10% penalty on, on that, which there normally would be if you're under 59 and a half. Um, if you, you have two options if you do that. One would be not to ever pay it back at all and, and just keep that money. And then you would be taxed on that income instead of in, 2020, you'd be taxed on it over three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, if you decide you want to pay it back, you would pay it back over those three years as well. And so you'd have the option to pay it back over time and not be taxed on it at all. So in essence, make a higher level of contributions for those, those years. Um, so this you know, should be looked at as a, another emergency source of income. Um, for you. Um, the, uh, there are a whole lot of questions on the implementation of this. So what if you paid back half of it? When would you be, be taxed on it? How would that work? All of that needs, needs to be figured out. But if you're in need of money and have money in a retirement account, it's something that you might want to consider um, is tapping into that account to, um, and, and pull down some money over it. You would not have to do it. I don't believe you'd have to do it all at once, but I don't think you can do it like a thousand dollars at a time either. I think there's a, a, a limitation on the number of withdrawals that you can make that would be eligible for this um, tax waiver. Um, Any questions on that? I don't don't see any new questions. The, kind of the last thing okay. that we wanted to just touch on is the <clears throat> Tax deadlines. Um, a lot. The IRS has changed a lot of the deadlines um, for various and sundry filings, and um, the IRS and the federal government. And so I'm sure by now most of you, as most of you, have heard the the traditional April 15th deadline uh, has been pushed back to July 15th, which includes filing and paying uh, any payment of taxes are not due until July uh, July 15th. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, Delaware, and Maryland, I believe, have all followed suit uh, for filing and payment of taxes not due until July 15th. Along with that, the first quarter uh, estimated tax payment that is typically due April 15th has been pushed back to July 15th. Um, the second quarter payment that's due June 15th, the IRS is not, not pushed back. Um, but stay tuned. They may they may do that as well, um, given the, given the other other changes. Um, the IRS is also if you are have an installment payment agreement with the IRS, they have suspended payments um, due on those agreements between April 1st and July 15th. Um, so if, again, if you have an installment agreement, there will not be no payments from uh, April April 1st to July, July 15th on those. Um, similarly, student loan payments have been deferred until September 30th. So if you have student loans or you have children that have student loans and are making payments, um, they are not required to make payments 
um, between now and September 30th. Um, one of the other um, things the IRS has done is they have deferred payment on uh, the employer portion of um, withholding tax empl or employer social security tax. If you do take payroll, um, one of the things to consider is that um, the employer portion of the payroll tax for social security that you pay is 6.2% employer social security. You do not have to pay that until 21 and 22. They deferred half of it to December 31st of um, 2020. 2021 and 50% of it to December 31st, 2022. You also should know that you cannot um, you cannot defer those um, those payments uh, of employer taxes if you get the payroll protection loan forgiven. Um, they, they're considering that double dipping, I suppose, and so you can't you can't do both. Um, what else, Paul? Anything? Cool. A couple of questions. Uh, what's the difference between a 940 and a, and a 941? Um, one, uh, no, more, more seriously, the 940 is the federal unemployment tax return, which is filed on an annual basis. The 941 is, is where um, you account for the withholdings of federal income tax and Social Security and Medicare, and that's submitted on a quarterly basis. So, so if your bank's looking for the 940, at, um, you would there'd be one form to send in if the 941 there's four forms to send in um, there's another question about our townships um, postponed payment dates for property taxes um, I have not heard of, of any township doing that um, and and I can guess there's one reason and that's they need the money um, unlike the federal government our townships can't print money and um and just further spend you know into the deficit so they they probably are reluctant to do that um if if we hear of that we'll we'll oh upper gwinnett has interesting um so so maybe others have i've, I've read the, the local newspapers but had not um heard of that but but that'd be a nice nice benefit um and then go back to another question um are wit are wages forgiven payroll before or after our business expenses. So it, in the event that, that payroll is forgiven, um, it's the amount that's actually paid to the employees plus the healthcare, um, the group cost of group healthcare, um, and then local unemployment. So they've got their own definition for what payroll is at the, um, under the CARES Act. Um, I'm not sure what you mean before or after business expenses. Those, those are business expenses. And so those are the items that that would be forgiven. And again, the forgiveness itself is non-taxable. So you would deduct you you would deduct payroll in coming up with your net business income. Um, you would not include you would not add back the forgiven amount because it's right. it's tax free. Um, are there any other? questions. We've kept you here for about an hour and that's probably as much as anybody can talk about taxes and those sort of things. Um, <laughs> but um, glad to glad to answer questions. Um, Bernadette, you have our contact information. I people... do. You guys, I, I don't know if we can thank you enough. Thank you so much for your generous time this morning to give us all this great information. Glad, glad to help. We, uh, you know, we it, it's just a changing landscape so stay tuned pay close attention talk to your bank uh, make sure you stay in touch with your bank and figure out what's going on with them from day to day and uh, again we're glad to help we real estate agents and brokers are what we do so uh, we'd be glad to help you any way we can Awesome. Guys, thanks so much, KW. Thank you guys all for tuning in this morning. Sue Thomas, thank you so much for hooking us up with this today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Paul. You guys were both amazing. Uh